Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. We have a lot to talk about today. Now, um, as per usual, typical Roadblock fashion, I actually already recorded an episode today, and that was during my stream, and I was full of distractions on that. And since then, way more stuff has come out. So I wanted to talk about all of that stuff. I wanted to give you guys an update on what the free-to-play account is doing. We've made really good progress on the account. I've made massive changes in certain areas of the game, which have resulted in big improvements. So I wanted to address some of those changes, my plan, what's going on. So first, let's talk tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, there will be a champion chase. As we know, we've been planning for it, right? So in this champion chase, there will also be a 2x on legendaries. That means that when I pull sacred shards tomorrow, there will be a two times chance. So this will become 12%. So a 12% chance to get a legendary out of a sacred shard. We're also going to get a 10x on this absolute monster of a champion, uh, Legate. Legate, Legate, Teox. So, real briefly look over his kit. Um, he is a faction unity champion for the Lizardmen. The first hit is a two times hitter. The ally with the highest critical damage will team up, team up and join the attack. This is going to be very good when you have somebody with a strong A1, which there's quite a few of them, right? Um, but... To be able to guarantee it's the highest crit damage champion on a two times hitter as well. There's some very big value here. Um, this means, like, for example, with Newt, I can... Because Newt is going to be one of my higher crit damage champions. He'll always use his A1 off of this. That's going to be really good for, like, Hard Fire Knight. It'll be really good in... Um, it, you know, depending on who's A1 it uses, you can really manipulate that when it comes to Hydra. Um, so many different areas of the game where you can gain a lot of value by manipulating this crit damage feature and guaranteeing that ally attack. Now, granted, a regular ally attacker can do that, but in my case, I don't have a regular ally attacker yet, so there's a lot of value here from Teox. Um, and then damage dealt by this champion and the ally will be increased by 10% for each debuff on the target. So this hits, it does hit really hard. I watched some streams today of other content creators that, that looked up the, you know, the uh, multipliers and said this hits hard. Here we have a uh, single target, three times hitter. Each hit will ignore 10% of the target's defense for each debuff on the target. So if they have five debuffs, you get 50% ignored defense. Um, if you don't know how powerful that is, just look at what my son Wukong did before I put him in Savage and what he's doing now, it's crazy. Ignoring defense is very important in this game. Each hit will also increase this champion's attack by 10%, stacks up to 50%. So, right at that third hit is going to have, theoretically, would have 20 times more. I don't know if the attack happens before or after the attack. If it happens before the attack, the third hit, he'll have 30% more um, attack on that third hit. At minimum or it'll have 20 percent more attack at, uh, so it, it could go either way but this also grants an extra turn if it kills an enemy which if you're familiar with rotos at all this is very similar in rotos's ability right because you're ignoring 50 percent of defense and if it kills somebody you get an extra turn and then you have an aoe here this one is part of the faction unity before attacking he self buffs increase attack and crit damage and then does an extra hit on any enemies under any debuffs. If you're setting up a team and you're bringing a decreased defense or a weaken or both, then you're going to set yourself up and he's going to hit really, really... He's going to get an extra hit out of this hard-hitting, I assume, nuke. Um, and then if you have lizard men on the team, you're going to ignore strength and ally protected shields. Um, any enemies killed while under a debuff will be block revived. That's huge. You're talking block revive on an AOE hit um with a self buff and an extra hit this is gonna smack uh then it also deals 20 percent more damage for each debuff on each enemy stacking up to 100 percent. so you can actually double the damage that this does it's nutty 
The final, finally, we've got fill this champion's turn meter by 5%. Whenever an enemy or an ally receives a debuff. So he's going to gain a lot of turn meter. This is... So I think a little differently. I This, this to me says, hey, I could build him a little slower. Right? Because... 5% turn meter when an enemy or an ally receives a, a debuff. To me, it says, hey, this guy is going to gain a lot of turn meter, and you could potentially build him a little slower uh, with that in mind. Does that mean attack percent boots? Possibly. I don't know for sure, right? But let's talk about this. Has a 25% chance to counterattack whenever an ally is attacked by an enemy under a debuff. If there are multiple champions, uh, yeah, that's typical. There's only one, one, one counterattack. With two faction allies, decreases the damage this champion receives from enemies under debuffs by 50%. The damage allies receive from enemies under debuffs is by 20%. We'll talk about that in a second. All allies are immune to sheep debuffs. This, of course, is massive. But we're talking right here about this damage reduction. That uh, 50%... For him, and then allies, it gets reduced by 20%. Immediately, I think of a couple of different champions when that happens. Because it's passives that decrease damage taken. You've got 25% with Duchess, 15% from bosses. His doesn't say anything about bosses, so he's getting 20% on bosses regardless for the allies. And then himself taking 50% less. Is really really big and then the same thing comes to mind the other champion that comes to mind who would be working with him if you have him is a Pytheon whose passive stacks up to 25% and again that doesn't specify for bosses therefore you stack a Pytheon together with him you're getting a lot of damage reduction without before anybody takes a turn you're just starting with damage damage reduction he is busted 10x on him tomorrow because of the 10x, I was going to only pull sacreds until I complete the champion chase. However, I may pull all of my sacreds to chase after this guy. He is that good. He is an account changing champion. Um, if you're thinking like, okay, well, what lizard men are really good with him? Um, you know, I've got Venomage is one for me personally that I, I currently have. Vargal would be really good paired up with him in Hydra. He's going to do a lot of damage. Vargal is going to get a lot of provoking out there. Um, that could be a really good Hydra team for me. Broadma is a reviver. Um, and, or, sorry, a block. Yeah, a reviver that could p potentially go with them. That's looking at my team. If you want to look bigger, you know, Ramantu. One of, one of the problems that Ramantu has that I always hear when people talk about him is that polymorph is a thing. Right. Well, if you pair him with Teox, Polymorph's no longer a thing. So one of the big weaknesses of Ramantu, who's technically free, kind of goes away when you get Teox involved. Obviously, Nekmothar for Hydra would be really good paired with Teox. And in fact, Nekmothar anywhere paired with Teox is going to be very good. We haven't even tar started talking about the new mode yet. But Nekmothar's value in the new mode, I think, is quite high because of his speed in all battles. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. I, but I think one of the best to go with Draco, with him is Dracomorph. Because you do get that weakened and decreased defense while also being a lizard man. Um, you don't hear much about Dracomorph anymore. I'm not even familiar with his whole kit. I just know he's weakened and decreased defense in the same ability. You pair that up with this team, you're going to be able to get a lot of damage and debuffs out there, which you want. You get two of the best for doing damage. That's decreased defense and weaken. So, yeah, I really think just all around really, really strong. Now, my main account, this guy would blow my main account up. It would be so good. I have Pytheon on my main account. I've got Fushan on my main account, who I would rebuild if I got this guy. Um, eventually, I could get uh, Ramatu, right? Like, I'm pretty ha happy with my main account roster, so uh, as far as Lizard Men go. So he would add more to that. Now, what I'm looking forward to is the next one on this account. The next one is going to be Skinwalkers. If it's anything compared to what Teox just did, and I have this roster of Skinwalker legendaries, 
we are going to be in for a good time. So looking forward to next month when we get to see that in action. Whatever that, that champion's going to be. Okay, uh, let's talk about progress real quick. So the Dragon Tournament is done. Something I learned on stream when I realized I was short five fragments. I actually forgot to finish the Fire Knight Tournament on this account. Uh, I missed it by 250 points exactly, which is kind of funny. But that's okay. We have a big cushion because we did do the uh champion or we did the uh summon rush okay um so for right now we've got the champion training tournament going on uh so what we did we did yes 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 but we didn't do the fire knight tournament but that's okay because we have a 10 point cushion as long as i do everything else i can still skip one more five fragment thing but I didn't want to. I actually wanted to get both of the extra five fragments per mod, High Mother mod. So for those of you that don't don't remember, um, in the fragment summons, you can you know sell the fragments that you got from other previous fusions to gain uh, broken fragments that you can use to get chests that could have High Mother mod fragments in it. Um, High Mother Mod's really good. I would love to get her on this account. So that is something that I am looking towards. And um, any extra fragments I get during this fusion will help me get her, right? So it's just that little bit of extra stuff. Um, I may have to skip a thing, though, you know? But I may have to skip another, uh, another five fragment one. And we'll talk about that here. Actually, yeah, we can talk about that right now. So... Uh, the current the events going on right now dragon tournament is done we finished that good news there uh champion training we are still doing but we have time so i'm not in a rush to complete champion training the classic arena starts tomorrow that's very easy to get we will get that easy champion chase i expect to do pretty easily i'm spending 10 sacred shards we're going to get enough points to max out not well we're going to get enough points to get the fragments whether or not i win the tournament obviously that's the totally different scenario but we will be doing that and then we have um artifact enhancement already done and i'll show you who i used those artifacts on and dungeon divers we are in the middle of now this is the tricky part i need 900 more dungeon diver points I have used up every source of energy I can think of right now. In the Cursed City, I've done the closest energy one I can get to is all the way over here. I won't be able to get to that uh, to debt on either on either difficulty. I do not have an easy route to energy on either difficulty right now, and I only have five keys left. So uh, I. Putting that on the back burner, you know, we'll do Cursed City tomorrow. There's no reason to do it tonight. Um, I need to focus on trying to get this these events done. I've already done my keys, and I've gotten any of these that were energy I've completed. So I've gotten any energy I could get from the Doom Tower. And then if we look at the Bazaar, I did get the energy from there. There is no energy in the clan shop. So uh, I won't be able to get any energy from there. I've pretty much done everything I can do to get free energy on the account. Quests, we've done uh, all of the, the dailies that were necessary. You'll see that we just reset the weekly. So I'm quite far from any extra weekly energy. Same for monthly. There could be some, uh, you know, I could get 50 energy here. Uh, that's relatively easy. All I have to do is fight with a team from a single faction. I can definitely do that. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and get that 50 energy because that's it's going to save me a little bit, right? So um, we'll just come do this one. And let's just do... We'll just clear it all out. And we'll do Sacred Order as the faction. I didn't say I had to win. It just said I had to compete. There we go. So obviously we're going to lose this, but I'm going to get that 50 energy. Uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long. This might take a really long time. 
I'm hoping their Sun Wukong is reasonably built. Okay, cool. There we go. Oh, okay. Actually, I realized I was like, could I just quit? <laughs> um, all right, claim my reward. So there's 50 more energy for this. I'm very nervous about my gem count. And this is a greedy play. This is a greedy situation that I'm in, right? Because do I want these prism crystals? You're damn right. I want these prism crystals. Is that worth the amount of gems that it's going to take, right? So why don't we do a little bit of math? We've got a thousand gems. Um, and if you go to the gem shop, it's 40 gems. So how many refills can I get? So 1000 divided by 40. So I could get 25 refills and each of those refills is 130 energy. So that's 3000 energy. I don't need that much energy. If I had to guess based on how close I am, I would say I need maybe like a, like a thousand, maybe 1100 energy. Um, to compete, complete this, but that is quite a lot of gems. And if we're looking at like other stuff going on in the game, do I think I'm going to make up those gems is the question. Um, you know, as far as tournaments go, the champion training tournament, I'm going to need energy for this, but here's where I was going to decide this. And I, I was theory crafting a little bit before, but I said, I was going to, you know what, let's do this on camera. So what do I still need energy for? Uh, the dragon tournament is done. I need energy for the champion training tournament, but I have a lot of time to do that. So I can use passive energy gain. To get that done, I can use energy from tomorrow. Um, I can enter, you know, when when reset happens tomorrow, I can get energy. I can get potentially more gems from clan boss, which will give me energy. So there's a lot of sources of energy for this champion training tournament. Then we have uh, this dungeon divers, of course, is already done. This artifact enhancement is already done. Classic arena doesn't need energy. Champion Chase doesn't need energy. That's pulling shards. So the only stuff that I need energy, uh, more energy for is Spider Tournament and Dungeon Divers. This Spider Tournament will probably be about 2,200 energy, if I had to guess. Um, so I feel like I have that wiggle room within the gems. Um, and the artifact enhancement is silver. So the reality is, I, can, it, I think what I do is I go for maxing out this Dungeon Divers and getting those crystals. And then Dungeon Divers 3, worst case scenario, I have to skip and just not get the fragments from. But I think that's an okay thing to do. I think we're okay there, right? Because we're going to be able to do Spider on, on Sunday and overlap that with Dungeon Divers. So looking forward to that. Um, so I think I will go ahead and use a big chunk of my gems here to get a big chunk of energy and go ahead and knock that out. Now the question is, do I want to do dragon or do I want to do something like spider, um, you know, a different area of the game? I think I'm going to do dragon uh, because there's a possibility that I could just win this tournament too, which isn't a big deal, but I would get additional relentless gear and I would get an additional ancient shard. Um, and I'm pretty close right now. So you're talking another thousand energy. That's going to put me at, at uh, you know, 3,400. Now this guy could still be putting energy in and I could still lose, but I think it's better for me to try, right? And just do dragon rather than um, a different, a difficulty. Plus let's talk about dragon because we've got good news there. So on Dragon, we do have the two times speed right now, right? So we have an increased chance at speed gear. And then if we look at Dragon, I can do Dragon on hard. It's one of the few dungeons I can do on hard. And I've reworked my team and sped it up quite a bit. So let's talk about that. We've gained a lot in the last couple of days, right? We now have Ugo. We have Mithrala. 
Sorry, I couldn't remember her name. Um, and our son Wukong can wave clear better than my seer right now because my seer is actually really weak now when you compare her because she does not have any ignore defense gear and her stats are relatively low. Only 206% crit damage is pretty low um, when you consider the um who you're kind of compare you know comparing her to because like if you look at my my son wukong he's doing 22 percent more crit damage than what my um seer is doing but his scaling is different too because it's attack based he can get increased attack we can put decreased defense right so there's ways to make that sun wukong really smack and when we do dragon he clears the waves pretty well i just use our mons for safety i did run this with a different comp i i did somebody different than our mons i don't remember at this point who it was um oh, i think it was like geomancer or something but what i was finding was that occult brawler is one of the waves for this and he was actually killing my son Wukong and blocking revive. So then then when I it so then it took me longer to get through the waves and when I finally got through the waves and got to the boss, I was only fighting the boss with four champions instead of five. And Sun Wukong, despite being more of a wave clear, you know, PVP nuker can still hit the boss relatively hard. So um I made the swap, I brought Armands in. He just controls the waves and lets Sun Wukong do his thing. Um, but the big changes that I've made to my team are Mithrala, because she can cleanse any debuffs that the dragon gives. She just gets rid of them. And we have a mini cleanse, but most importantly, we have a heal on Mighty Ugo. Now, we built Mighty Ugo today. This is who I built using my to complete my artifact enhancement event. So I built all this gear pretty much Almost all of this, except for the protection set, was leveled. Now, I do want to talk about her gear a little bit. I am mostly building her for Hydra. I wanted her fast and accurate. Now, she has no masteries on her yet and already has 277 accuracy. We're at 225 speed on my account. That is pretty fast. Um, to put it in perspective, my Armands is only 270, and I think my Arbiter is 305. So, 2... 25 in a relentless set is pretty fast i also have yet to enchant any of these speed rolls and almost every almost everything not all of it but almost everything had speed rolls on it um including the accuracy banner so i did go with attack ring to complete the protection set and i did that because we get an additional 12 percent speed bonus out of the protection set and a big chunk of hp which when it comes to mighty ugo a lot of people forget this heals all allies by 20 percent of this champion's hp so it bases it around ugo's hp and she can heal really well uh, i often forget about that myself which is why i say that some people forget about it i'm i'm some people uh we have block buffs and decreased defense on the a2 now she needs masteries for this to land every time and then the A1 Leech, uh, pretty low chance of landing. It feels even lower without that extra 5% mastery, but we will get those eventually. Just now is not the time we're using our gems for other areas of the game. So um, those are the big changes that we have on the account. And boy, are things going well on the account. My team on this before was about three minutes. And now the, my fastest is down to 202. Um, and it was like, it wasn't like an even three minutes. It was like 349 or, you know, something, almost four minutes, I think. Um, and so I was like, well, we need to switch this team up. Like it was passing, but we needed to make it faster. And making the changes, bringing in Mighty Ugo. Um, I keep, I may have been calling her Mighty Ugo. I'm sorry. I know it's Ugo. And it's not Mighty Ugo. It's just Ugo. <laughs> My brain, it's been a very long day, guys, and a very tough week. But, yeah, Ugo, Ugo's awesome. And um, 
I slept on her way too long on this account and didn't even realize how much I was really sleeping on her. I never had a really good healer. Like, yes, we have um, Godseeker, but if you look at Godseeker's kit, she has a weak heal because her heal is based on their max HP. So if she's healing, like, if she's healing Rathalos, for instance, she's only healing him for 15% of 35,000, right? But Ugo is going to heal for 20% of 57,000. So a higher percentage and more HP. And I could definitely get more HP out of this build as well. And I will do that. I would love to have an HP ring instead, but you know, you got to roll with the punches. Now I went with HP on the neck because of accuracy on that neck, because I do want her to have accuracy. We are using her in Hydra. We need that accuracy to land her debuffs. Masteries will help with that when we get there. We're not there yet, but at her current state, she does, she has enough accuracy for early PVE content. And I say early, I'm hard dragon is not early content but she's able to land her debuff on dragon that's the important part we're able to get that decreased defense maybe not the block buffs but we don't really care about the block buffs on dragon so ugo is huge and you know my previous decreased defense champion was um and this is why i slept on ugo for so long it was deacon and Deacon's not bad in, in that slot and, and, and actually maybe in some ways could be better than Ugo and I might need to try that. But um, so far, Ugo with, with her build and um, just and the healing, that's the big thing is that healing really makes a difference because for so many, like my all my... Uh, Hydra teams that I've been saying, hey, we're doing 40, you know, 40 million over 35 million. I haven't had any healing. So I get to a point where everybody's just really, really low and we're just relying on shields, um, you know, to keep us going in those fights. So Ugo is going to completely change that. And then the mini cleanse on top of it. If anybody does happen to get something on them, we get this mini cleanse and we even won a fight today. Because of her living and this passive triggering, the block damage, and then she was able to revive the whole team, and we were able to win. I think it was Scarab, or no, it was the uh, Nether Spider. We were able to squeak out a win after a couple of tries there. So, uh, Ugo's, I, it's one of those things where sometimes, you know, you get so comfortable with a champion that you have i've had ugo on my main account for a very long time you just get comfortable and then you look at it and you know you're like she's not that good right and then you build her again and you put her in into in, and immediately things get so much better and it's just like what was i thinking how did i not real like how did i not remember how amazing ugo is so Keep, remember what your needs are, <laughs> you know, you can get cocky and say, well, I don't need healing or I've got, I've got Armands. I don't need healing. I don't, you know, and, but I don't need that little baby cleanse. I've got Mithrala now. Well, I needed it. I boy, did I need it. So we got her done. We did that as part of the champion training tournament. We were waiting to do that. We did that last night and now she's already leveled up maxed out gear and ready to go so very excited to have ugo on the team and excited for how that's going to impact our progress moving forward so i'll have more information about her progress and what we can do with her in hydra and other areas of the game as we move forward so keep an eye out for that one thing i want to mention real quick uh i've been talking about the summon pool stuff and these prisms um, I want to point out a couple of things real quick, and it's a little late because I'm recording late, but, uh, if you are going to, I, by the way, I do not recommend spending money on prism crystals. I just don't never will. I think they are a complete sink of money. And I don't think the bang is worth the buck. So just saying that, but if you do want to spend money, I know people are waiting to pull their prisms tomorrow for the champion chase, which is smart. 
and you should do that. That's why I'm bringing this up. Wait to pull your, your prisms until tomorrow. Um, but if you are going to buy crystals, you need to do them tonight. The crystal offers, while the event goes longer, buying the crystals does not. So you won't be able to buy the crystals on the last day. So keep that in mind. Um, and we will be pulling both our crystal. Like I've saved up this, this crystals right here and I'm going to get another 35. We'll pull both of those tomorrow and see if we can get lucky and get something out of that pool. And of course we'll be pulling our, uh, oh, let me explain when I'm pulling. Hey, tomorrow, 930 Eastern time, uh, is when my stream starts, come hang out, come watch me pull shards. Always a great time. I gift memberships to anybody it, to uh, randomly. I gift memberships randomly in chat to anybody that's watching during a shard pull. So, you know, that's an opportunity to watch my streams without ads, to it's an opportunity to maybe take, get an account takeover if you're looking for one. There's a lot of really fun opportunities and, and, and it's just a fun time because we get to chat, have, have a laugh. You can ask me questions directly. I'll show you things on my account. You know, a lot of times I see someone in the comments, hey, can you show me what your tag team arena teams are, you know? And it's like, oh yeah, I never click over here, do I? And then I can say, oh, this is the tag team arena teams. I could probably update this, you know? Like, um, so, and then I do live arena as well. Live arena has been going meh for me. Um, you'll see we had a, a, a mixed bag today of wins and losses. Um, but yeah, there's a, Definitely fun stuff that we we do on the streams. So if you want to come hang out for one of those, tomorrow would be the best day to kind of get a feel of it because we're going to be pulling shards, get to see my reaction live. Look, this, I don't do this that much, but this is just a, you know, a green screen behind me. I'm telling you right now, if I pull the lizard Teox on either of my accounts tomorrow... I am going to stand up from this desk so fast and launch this chair backwards. I, I, this isn't like a, a threat or like I'm going to unconsciously do this because I am going to be so excited to pull this guy. I'll probably knock that screen over. You're not going to want to miss that live. <laughs> uh, no promises. I'm not guaranteeing that's going to happen because if that does happen, my wife will probably come out here and hit me. <laughs> not, not really guys. Not really. But yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be a good time. Looking forward to doing that. One last thing we need to talk about, and this is a long video, so I'm not going to go in depth on it, but siege mode is out. This is a warning to you guys. Do not do anything until your clan leader or other members of your clan are ready for you to do something. Okay. I kicked two people from my clan today. Because they went and they threw their defense teams out there. One caveat to that. The people that I kicked from my clan were not active members in the clan. Um, for I don't know if your clans are the same way. Some of you may be in really high-end clans that have like a really long recruitment process. Other clans, like my clan, um, I desperately need to keep 30 people. And people are coming and going all the time. So I'm always just constantly promoting the clan. If you don't know what it's like to be a clan leader, I can't do it here, but there's a promote button in here and you can advertise the clan for a short period of time. And you get a little chat bubble to, to know if someone's good enough for your clan. Uh, my clan is recruiting right now because I have two spots open and I get people ask me all the time, you know, hey, can I join your clan? Yes, but a couple of things. Ma Discord's mandatory. I'm expecting people to be pursuing gold five in my clan. Um, and I need people that are willing to communicate with me for this clan siege. Cause I'm taking it seriously, despite the fact that the words, are, the rewards are trash. Um, I would refer you because I'm out of time to Saf's video. Uh, he's, his channel is HH gaming. I think it's called, uh, he did a breakdown about the rewards in here. The rewards are really, really bad. So this victory chest, I thought this was a meme. I thought they were just, it was a placeholder. No, it's actually three prism crystals for this tier. Now there are higher tiers that you can um, get to. I know there is a way to see the tiers and there they are. So there are higher tiers that you can get to and you can get up to 25 at the highest tier. 
but you have to win to get that chest and it's very easy to not win um, because you have to not only get more points in them but also take the stronghold and that can be difficult so i have a few strategies for what i want to do here i talk them over in stream and i don't want to um waste your guys time kind of talking about it but i think there's a lot of value in different parts of the game but a couple of things i wanted to really go over one save these resources don't just throw your defense teams anywhere in here there is strategy here and that needs to be taken into consideration for example i have i'm really highly valuing these towers right here these magic towers and the guy in my clan just to you know put both his teams in this magic tower and said cool and they weren't even good teams and i'm like no what are you doing so um that was one of the guys that i kicked and again they, they're not i wasn't just being mean they're not active they didn't talk in our chat they didn't go, join our discord they were just kind of floaters i call them and they happened to make a bad decision and i tried to talk to them in game they didn't want to respond see you later so um but yeah there's a lot of like strategy here and i'm trying to come up with a good defensive strategy like you know holding specific defense towers magic towers holding specific choke point posts but i did want to kind of look at a couple of different things for you to consider um first of all keep in mind this is not arena so your arena aura leads will not work here and that's a very very important your speed in all battles is at a premium now like any champions that has speed in all battles has gone up so like my deacon his value has gone up on the free to play and things such as that but the conditions here are something to really pay attention to because this is a really great example of a room and i've talked about this so let's say that you're a clan leader let's say you're just playing the game or whatever and you need to defend this room so if i do um the corrupted which the corrupted is this it's these four factions demon spawn undead hordes dark elves knights rev and then the, the other one was Galen Pact. I won't go back to that screen, but it was, or was it Galen Pact? It might not have been. Um, so let's, I will go back to it. So if I go back to post 15, yeah, it was. Corrupted, Galen Pact, or defense only. So if I go and look at the index, and if we say corrupted, that means Rhodos. That means Siffy. That means Ancora. That means Narciss. That means Georgid. Um, that means Kaimar. That means Mortu Macabre. That means Hefrak. Even Lord Shazar is one to be considered. His aura doesn't work. Duchess, her aura does work, 19%. Right? Candifron. Inithwi. You're opening yourself up to really, really strong teams. And you, or a member of your clan, may not have that strong team. So you really want to keep that in consideration when you're looking at a defense post. And you don't have to turn these on, by the way. You can just put a team in here and say, no, I'm going to save my mana. I'm not going to turn this on. And anybody can use anything. But if you're setting, if I was to do this and I said, okay, Galen Pact... You know, yes, it allows my son Wukong, but I have no support for my son Wukong. If I say yes to Corrupted, yes, I can use my UDK, but I have no support or damage for that UDK that's currently built on my roster. And if I did Defense, that's a little bit better. I got a lot of champions built, but they're not really PvP champions. So keep these things in mind. And I will show you that different posts have different settings. So, or different conditions that you can choose. So, for example, this one is HP only. This one is um, Skinwalker only. This one is support only. Uh, that one may be an equalizer a little bit. But, you know, somebody that has like a Siffy or something is probably going to be better 
support wise than, you know, me with, with my team. So th those are really cool things. And again, that costs mana and your clan leader may have different goals for what the mana will be used for. So keep that in mind. I recommend if you're in a clan, try to communicate with your clan leader if they had, care about this at all. They may not. I suspect a lot of people may not care very much about this because the rewards are so bad. The gear is really good, in my opinion. So the gear, it is a souped up perception set. So 40 accuracy, 5% speed, right? That's a perception set on two pieces. The third piece gives you another 40 accuracy. And then this place, if you get the fourth piece, it places block debuffs on the wearer at the start of the round for two turns. That's really, really good. And keep in mind too, with the Wixwell meta and this whole like running three champions that can extend buffs, you can get block debuffs with gear that you would want to put on champions anyways. And just forever extend this. I assume. It's not a... I assume. It just says block debuffs. I assume you can just extend that. I don't know for sure. But it's possible. You get another 5% speed for the 5 piece. The 6 piece though. 50% chance to prevent the placement of sheep debuffs by polymorph. This is very important. It's by polymorph. So make sure you understand that this is only referring to the blessing. You can still be sheeped by Armands. You can still be sheeped by other, uh, by what? Sun Wukong is another sheep. It's only the polymorph blessing sheep. But that means that your debuffers don't have to be scared about debuffing anymore. They can place their debuffs and not be afraid. Your Armands can strip debuffs and well, still be, they have to be half afraid. <laughs> uh, but you're going to get a better chance at not being polymorphed, which I think is really good. Um, and then, of course, the 9 set, all all allies deal 5% more damage per each debuff placed by the wearer. So if you have somebody that places a ton of debuffs on an enemy, the allies are going to do a lot more damage. Some of the what really comes to mind for me and I don't know if I can see it or not, is the really high-end Sand Devil teams. I can't see it on this. Yeah, there's not a best teams here or anything like that. Um, but they run, I, I want to say, not Contra. Is it Riho? Riho Bone Spear? Um, so they, yeah. Sand Devil takes increased damage by the number of debuffs that are on him while he's asleep because she applies all of these debuffs. And then you talk about putting her in a set that increases the damage that allies do to her, based on her debuffs. That's a really good set for her. Are we going to get the set very quickly where we can complete um, big runs of it? Absolutely not. We're not going to get a lot of pieces. They're not going to be good pieces. We're going to trash them. We're going to re-roll them. It sucks, but from, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still upgraded perception gear, which is one of the best sets in the game. So it, very important set and it should be gone after, um, despite the fact that we're not going to get a lot, despite the fact that the rewards are very weak. And the reality is you're only spending, a, you're, you're creating two defense teams that you will never touch again once you put, I mean, per every two weeks. You'll put your defense teams in, and then you won't touch them. And then when you go on the attack, all you have to do is coordinate and make sure you're attacking fights that you can win. And not taking too easy of a fight, but not taking too hard of a fight. And that can be a little tricky, but as long as you're communicating with your clan leader, I think you're going to be fine. So, um, and I do know it is important to go after these mana shrines too and make sure that you can unlock those to get more mana for future fights. I do wonder if your settings won't reset. Now, obviously we'll need Florins and stuff to like repair important buildings and such, um, which will get Florins from fighting in the game. But as far as the mana, um, I do feel like it feels like it's a progressive upgrading thing. Like I will constantly, as a clan leader, 
be upgrading this area, making it stronger for next week and the wet and the week and the next week and the next week and the next week. So, and there are some things that you can do if you play smart where you can really um, limit the weaknesses in a room and play things in, in your favor. So there's a lot of really good strategies that me and my team are coming up with. I hope you and your clan are doing the same. I'm excited for it. Despite the fact that the, the resources suck, or the rewards suck, sorry. Uh, I am pretty excited about it. So, sorry for the long video. We had a lot to cover. I'm really proud of my account and really proud of the changes that I made. Um, for a while there, I was kind of being lazy, and now I just souped everything up and said, cool, let's start using these champions that I've been sla slacking on and get, get a move on, and it's been working great. My next champion, the last thing I want to talk about, my next champion is going to be Razzlevarg. Uh, we are finally going to build the bunny. You'll see I already put some gear on him. This was to finish out the artifact enhancement event. Um, but we will be putting gear on him and building him because I think he pairs very, very well with my Hydra team. Um, and then the once he's done, then we're going to build Gwendolyn. And that's going to be our final piece of our primary Hydra team. Now we're going to have a secondary team. Um, but this will be the primary piece of the main team. And that's going to be, I can show you really quickly before I maybe let you guys go. So it would be, um, doot, doot. Um, I got to remember some of these are 50. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think newt and there was another that i'm definitely sleeping on at this very minute and cannot tell you who the heck it was i had three champions is it geo it might be geo Yeah, I think it's G. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, it's Wixwell. It's Wixwell. Yeah, okay. Wixwell was my provoker. So Wixwell for provoke. And then uh, speed or a lead. We've got these are our two damage dealers. We've got decrease speed here, um, increase speed here. We've got AoE leech here. We've got a little bit of healing, but decrease defense and block buffs. And this all just works really, really well together, I feel like. So very, very excited about this team and what I'm going to be able to do with it. So I just need to finish leveling up the owl and the bunny. So, all right, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I know it was a long video. I appreciate those of you that stuck with me to the end. Um, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. That is the best way to support my channel. I am trying to grow. I'm trying to become a content creator full time. Um, while I do stutter and say I'm a little bit too much, I think I'm pretty decent at it. So do... Uh, 1200 people that have subscribed so if you want to be part of that 1200 i would appreciate it um and then again tomorrow 9 30 a.m eastern time we will be pulling shards on the account always a good time always fun please consider coming and hanging out it's an absolute blast and i think that's everything i got for you so thank you guys for watching thank you for all of the support and i will see you in the next video